Hello, backyard ecologist. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. Instead of covering a plant, pollinator, or critter, I'm gonna cover six items I think every backyard ecologist should own that will better help them enjoy the nature and wildlife in their backyard and neighborhood. In addition to the six items I promised in the title, I'm gonna have a bonus item towards the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that. Let's start with one of my favorite books, The Caterpillars of Eastern North America by David Wagner. Not only is this a great reference to help you identify the caterpillars you find, it is also a super good host plant reference. And where that comes in handy is if you're planning out your garden, you can look up the host plant by species or by common name in the index, and you can see which caterpillars use it, how many caterpillars use it. And you also can look up a caterpillar or butterfly species in a separate index, and it will tell you the exact same information. What host plants it uses. It also will tell you if there are regional differences in the host plants, um, depending on where the caterpillars are found, which is super handy. And uh, the photography is excellent. And David Wagner is the authority on caterpillars in Eastern North America. So this book is well worth it. And I use it practically every day. I'm looking something up in this book. Of course, if you're planting host plants for caterpillars, you're also gonna be drawing lots of butterflies. And you'll need a field guide for that too. And I recommend the Kaufman Field Guide to Butterflies in North America. This is a super easy to use guide. It has all the information you need right on the same page. So the range map, the species description, and the illustration pointing out the field marks to identify that particular species are all right there on the same page. Super simple to use. Um, a very handy guide to have. If you're drawing butterflies in, you're gonna wanna know what they are eventually. And some of them look very similar. So having a good field guide that points out all the different little intricate field marks on them is very important. And this guide does that. I'm gonna stick with things that fly here for a minute. And every backyard ecologist should have a good bird field identification guide. If you're planning for pollinators and wildlife, birds are probably towards the top of the list of things that you're trying to attract. Being able to identify them is important because if you're doing a good job, you're gonna get way beyond the normal cardinals, chickadees, and blue jays that show up in every backyard. You're gonna start seeing some weird stuff and knowing what it is may be important to you. Uh, I like to know what the things are in my backyard when I see them. Um, the National Geographic Guide is the one I started out with way back in college in ornithology. And it is laid out a lot like that butterfly guide that I pointed out, the Kaufman Guide. Uh, it has everything all right on the same page. Range map divided up by season when the birds are found in different areas. Uh, pictures of the birds, nice illustrations that allow you to see the field marks. They're all pointed out and a description of the bird and what it sound, sounds like when it's calling. Um, super easy guide to use. It even has little tabs on the sides here that have the different groups of birds broken down. So this is a super easy to use guide. Um, I've been using one since college, like I said, and it is my favorite bird guide by far. And I will have links to all these items in the description. This is an affiliate link, which simply means we get a small commission if you purchase the item. No extra cost to you. It's just something that we get from the seller, which goes to help support the channel. When dealing with things that can fly, like butterflies and birds, they can move around quite a bit, and sometimes they land in spots where you can't necessarily see them easily. And that's where a good pair of binoculars comes in handy. This allows you to pick out those field marks to help you identify them. Um, binoculars are one of those things, I, I consider it a must have if you're a backyard ecologist, because you're always gonna be seeing something you wanna take a look at binoculars come in handy for that. I have them all over the house. There's like four pairs in our house by the windows that face out into our yard. Uh, there's a pair in the car, there's a pair in my backpack. I have a lot of binoculars um, because they're that important. Um, recently, for the past several years, I've been using Vortex binoculars, uh, Diamondback HDs to be exact, and eight power. Um, for backyard birding and butterfly watching, don't get anything over eight power. Uh, if you get 10 power, it's really hard to zoom in, or not even zoom in, it's really hard to uh, get the, the bird or the butterfly in the field of view to look at it, because uh, your field of view is so much smaller. Um, eight powers are much easier to use, especially if you're not used to using binoculars. And at backyard ranges, they're plenty good. If you're gonna go out west on the plains somewhere and things are gonna be, you know, 100, 150 yards off, yeah, 10 powers have a place there. 
In the East, you can get by with eight powers most of the time. And these eight power Diamondback HD Vortex, um, they are really good glass for the money. They're not super expensive. Uh, with binoculars and optics in general, you get what you pay for. If you get a super, super cheap pair, they're, they're not going to last. They're going to be blurry. They're going to glare out when the sun's shining. Um, the HDs have a coating on them that uh, cuts a lot of the glare, uh, makes colors a lot sharper. I prefer them over the standard Diamondbacks, um, and the cost isn't that different. So uh, you might want to take a look at these. Um, a lot of shops do have them where you can try them out. Um, if you want to go take a look through them before you buy some, but I will have a link to these also. Binoculars also come in handy for identifying something you wouldn't think of, and that is trees. So I do a lot of tree identification. Obviously, if you've watched any videos on this channel, you know I love to identify trees. Um, my favorite book as of late has been the Princeton Field Guide to the Trees of Eastern North America because it just has everything in it. It includes ornamentals, natives, invasives, they are all in there. Um, it's a very easy book to use. And again, it's got range maps. It's got everything right on the page where the, the plant is. You don't have to go flipping through the book to look up a description or a map someplace else. It's all right there. It does have illustrations instead of pictures. I actually prefer that in a field guide. And the reason is plants vary a lot and you just need to key in on the key characteristics and not necessarily what a specific leaf looks like. A lot of times pictures tend to make people think that's what it always looks like and it can be a little bit tricky to identify that way because it may not look exactly like that picture. Um, this book is very comprehensive. Like I said, everything is in there and binoculars come in handy for identifying trees because sometimes the leaves are way up off the ground and, and you can't get a hold of them. So you can use those binoculars to look up there Take a look at the leaves, see what the flowers look like, see if there's any fruits, nuts, whatsoever, whatever on the tree. Uh, very handy um, pairing of things. There's the field guide and the binoculars when it comes to identifying trees. The other thing I like about the eastern, the trees of Eastern North America is it's just laid out in a very logical manner and it gives you all the little bits of information you need to identify that plant. If you've watched any of my tree videos and you like them, you'll love this book because it is laid out very similarly to the way I do my tree videos. If you have been watching my tree and shrub videos, then let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite and what species you would like me to do a video on in the future. I'm always looking for new video ideas and I do read all the comments and every now and then you will notice some of those comments do lead to new videos. So please share your thoughts. I do appreciate it. Kind of going along with trees is an item that I think everybody will find use for if you're doing backyard gardening for pollinators and wildlife and that is pruning shears and when it comes to pruning shears there are only one and that's it there's one brand that i use and that's felco's um, felco's are made in switzerland they have excellent steel they have great action they're super easy to use they're sharp out of the box um, they even come with a handy dandy little sharpener that is super easy to use. So when they start to get dull, you can tune them right up and, uh, you know, they will last you a very, very long time. Yes, they cost a little bit more than some of the ones you find at big box stores, but they are going to last forever. They got nice red handles on them. So they're a little harder to lose out in the woods. And something I always do to help make sure that I don't lose them is I get a sheath with them so that I can wear them on my belt in the sheath. And they're a little more secure in the sheath than they are rolling around in your pocket. And trust me, you do not want a pair of these popping open in your pocket um, because the blades are that sharp. They are, they are super sharp. These are excellent, very clean cuts. Um, if I'm doing cutting propagation, I'm cutting the cuttings with the Felcos because they are very, very good at that. They, uh, they don't crush the stems, super clean cut every single time. Um, I do have two different sizes, so the ones I was holding up before, they're the, they're the large size like I would use on woody items, these over here, and then these are the size I would use when I'm dealing with more herbaceous stuff, if I'm cutting some seed heads off some smaller plants, um, maybe deadheading something because I want it to continue growing instead of going to seed, something like that. These smaller ones are great for that, and same thing, super sharp, super good action, and uh, also come with a little sharpener that you can tune them up with. So Belco pruners, I will have a, 
uh, link in the description for these. Super, super good. Um, there are other pruners out there. Sometimes I use a cheaper set if I'm going to go lug them out into the woods and I'm going to be hacking on some just big old rank stuff like I'm doing invasive species control and I don't care how clean a cut it is as long as I chop it down and so I can spray it. Um, I'll use some cheaper ones for that and plus if I lose a you know $15 pair of pruners out in the woods it's not the end of the world. I don't want to lose my felcos out in the middle of the woods. Um, if I'm out there taking cuttings these go with me. Now it's time for our bonus item which isn't really an item, but is something super important. The backyard ecology community. If you're just getting started in your habitat journey, or perhaps you've been at it for a few years and feel stuck, the backyard ecology community is a great place for you. Shannon and myself are available there to answer any of your questions. We have two live meetings per month where we cover a specific topic for a few minutes, and then we take questions from everybody and discuss it throughout the group. We have helped many people get unstuck and start moving forward again on their habitat dreams. If you'd like to be a part of this, I will put a link to the Backyard Ecology community in the description. I'm going to say up front, there is a charge for it. We do have a monthly now so that you can join for a month to see if you like it. Most people do and they stick around for a longer term. It is a wonderful way to get on track with your habitat projects. And speaking of habitat projects, there is something else you can be doing right now to help you get a jump on next year's season, and that is winter sowing some seeds, which I cover in this video, and be sure to take some time and enjoy nature in your backyard.